Have you ever stopped in the middle of a busy day, looked up, and wondered why the sky greets us with that familiar calm blue, instead of red, green, or purple? It's one of the most ordinary sights in our lives, yet it hides a story involving light traveling at nearly 300,000 kilometers per second, invisible waves bouncing off tiny particles, and a cosmic coincidence that just happens to make Earth look the way it does. The color of the sky isn't painted above us, and it isn't a reflection of the ocean either, despite what many people are told as children. The real reason is far more fascinating, sitting at the crossroads of physics, astronomy, and the delicate structure of our atmosphere. Once you understand it, you'll never look at a clear blue sky the same way again. Let's explore, right here, on History of Simple Things. To understand why the sky is blue, we first need to talk about light itself. Sunlight might look white to our eyes, but it's actually a mixture of many different colors. These colors are arranged along a spectrum, from red at one end to violet at the other. Each color has a different wavelength. Red light has longer wavelengths, while blue and violet light have much shorter ones. When sunlight travels through the vacuum of space, nothing interferes with it, so it remains a blend of all these colors. But the moment sunlight enters Earth's atmosphere, the story changes. The atmosphere is filled with tiny molecules, mostly nitrogen and oxygen, that are much smaller than the wavelengths of visible light. When sunlight hits these molecules, it doesn't simply pass straight through. Instead, the light interacts with them in a very specific way. This interaction is known as Rayleigh scattering, named after the British scientist Lord Rayleigh, who first described it in the 19th century. Rayleigh scattering occurs when light collides with particles much smaller than its wavelength. Shorter wavelengths, like blue and violet, scatter much more efficiently than longer wavelengths, like red and orange. In fact, blue light scatters about 10 times more than red light. As sunlight enters the atmosphere, blue light is scattered in all directions, spreading across the sky. This scattered blue light reaches our eyes from every angle, making the entire sky appear blue rather than just the area directly around the sun. You might be wondering why the sky isn't violet instead. Since violet light has an even shorter wavelength and scatters even more than blue, the answer lies partly in biology and partly in astronomy. First, the sun emits slightly less violet light than blue light to begin with. Second, Earth's atmosphere absorbs some of the violet light before it can scatter widely. But most importantly, our eyes are far more sensitive to blue light than to violet light. Human vision evolved to detect certain wavelengths more efficiently than others, and violet falls near the edge of what we can see. The combination of these factors means that blue dominates our perception of the sky. Another common myth is that the sky is blue because it reflects the ocean. This idea sounds appealing, especially since oceans look blue too, but it's completely backward. The ocean appears blue largely because it reflects the sky, not the other way around. In fact, if you stand in a place far from any large bodies of water, like a desert or a mountaintop, the sky is just as blue. Even on planets with no oceans at all, skies can still have color, depending on the composition of their atmospheres. The color of the sky is determined not by what's below us, but by what surrounds us. The changing color of the sky throughout the day also offers clues to what's really happening. At sunrise and sunset, the sky often turns brilliant shades of red, orange, and pink. This happens because sunlight has to travel through much more atmosphere when the sun is low on the horizon. Along this longer path, most of the blue light is scattered away before it reaches your eyes. 
What remains are the longer wavelengths, reds and oranges, which pass through the atmosphere more easily. That's why sunsets can look fiery and dramatic, while the midday sky looks calm and blue. Clouds, pollution, and weather can also affect the color of the sky. On days with heavy pollution or wildfire smoke, the sky can appear hazy, pale, or even yellowish. Larger particles in the air scatter light differently, a process known as me scattering. Unlike Rayleigh scattering, which favors shorter wavelengths, me scattering affects many wavelengths more evenly. This can wash out the blue and give the sky a dull or milky appearance. It's a visible reminder that the color of the sky is closely tied to the cleanliness and composition of the air we breathe. The blue sky we enjoy is actually a sign of a relatively thin, clean atmosphere and a stable star at just the right distance. If Earth's atmosphere were thicker, thinner, or made of different gases, the sky could look completely different. On Mars, for example, the sky often appears pinkish or reddish due to fine dust particles in the atmosphere scattering light in their own unique way. On other planets, skies can be yellow, orange, or even black. Blue skies are not guaranteed in the universe. They're a special result of Earth's particular conditions. So the next time you find yourself gazing upward, remember that you're not just seeing empty space painted blue. You're witnessing sunlight being scattered by trillions of tiny molecules, a delicate dance between energy and matter that has been happening for billions of years. The sky's color is a quiet demonstration of physics at work, happening constantly above our heads without us even noticing. It's a reminder that even the most familiar parts of our world are shaped by invisible forces, patiently waiting for us to ask a simple question, like why the sky is blue. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.